हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई एम सुनील कुमार पीजीटी कॉमर्स केंद्रीय विद्यालय सेक्रेट आर के पुरम लेट मी टेक यू टू आर नेक्स्ट एपिसोड बट बिफोर स्टार्टिंग द न्यू चैप्टर लेट मी टेल यू द करेक्ट आंसर ऑफ द क्वेश्चन विच वी हैड इन आर लास्ट एपिसोड क्वेश्चन नंबर वन थिंकिंग ऑफ लॉन्चिंग न्यू कलेक्शन ऑफ ऑफिस वियर्स बाय अ गारमेंट मैन्युफैक्चरिंग कंपनी इज A organizing B staffing C planning D controlling and the correct answer is C planning Question number 2 Dividing the work in the company into purchasing manufacturing selling stores is an example of organizing staffing planning or controlling Students your correct answer is organizing your option number a the question third was giving advertisement in newspaper inviting public to apply for the vacant post of manager in the organization is whether organizing staffing planning or controlling the students the correct answer is b staffing now let we start our second chapter and the title of the chapter is principles of management Now the first of all the question arises what is the meaning of principles a principle means a statement of fundamental truth which has been established with reference to a cause and effect relationship between two or more variables these are the general guidelines which provides help to the managers in decision making these principles enable the managers to manage the enterprise effectively and efficiently The principles of management are derived through experimentation and observation method. The first method is experimentation method. In this method, by conducting experimental studies, results are noted down and conclusions are drawn. For example, Mr. F. W. Taylor suggested various studies like time study, motion study, fatigue study, standardization of work. to fix a day's optimum work a second method is observation method in observation method the events of the real life situations are observed and analyzed in order to arrive at a management principle for example the principle of division of labor divides by observing that division of work into smaller jobs leads to specialization which ultimately helps in the efficiency in the operations so these are the two ways through which the management principles are derived students now let we have the principles given by the father of general management mr henry fuel he has given 14 principles of management and he says if in any organization if the business is having all these principles then certainly the business will be able to manage itself very well and they will bring efficiency and effectiveness to their all the operations which will help them in the meeting of their common objectives now let we have the 14 principles given by him the first principle given by him is division of labor number 2 parity of authority and responsibility number 3 discipline number 4 unity of command number 5 unity of direction number 6 subordination of individual interest into common interest number 7 fair remuneration to the employees number 8 centralization and decentralization number 9 scalar chain number 10 order number 11 equity number 12 stability of tenure number 13 initiative and number 14 aspirity corps these 14 principles provide guidelines to all the managers working in the business organizations and will certainly help in the achievement of their operations successfully now the first principle of general management is division of work this principle states that work should be divided 
into small specialized tasks performed by a trained employee in order to bring specialization. This idea comes from the companies having various departments for finance, marketing, production, personnel, etc. These departments have specialized persons which leads to specialization which brings efficiency and helps in the achievement of organizational objectives. For example, if a person is good in technical, then he should be in the production department and should not be employed in the finance or in the personal department since the person can give his best, his 100% in the production department only. Second principle is parity of authority and responsibility. Parity means equality. When superiors are giving jobs to the subordinates, they must ensure that equal amount of authority is also given to them. Because once the responsibility is given and if authority is not given, then the subordinate will not be able to complete the task and as a result, the business will fail in achieving its common goals. Let me understand it with the help of an example. The head of a business organization has given a target of increasing the production from 5 lakh units to 6 lakh units to the production manager. Production manager has given this target to the foreman, but he fails to give the authority to the subordinate to take extra raw material from the store. At the end, the target of 6 lakh units were not met. As a result, the business fails in achieving its targets. What do you feel like students who should be kept responsible for that? Yes, you are right. It would be only production manager because while giving responsibility, he must have ensured equal amount of authority to the subordinate. But the foreman was not given the authority to take raw material from the store. As a result, it is only the production manager who will be kept responsible for not achieving the target. Our third principle is discipline. Discipline is the obedience to organization rules and employment agreements. All the employees who are coming from the different areas, different backgrounds, different religions, their work has to be coordinated. And it will be coordinated only when the discipline is maintained in the organization. Students, you might be thinking that discipline is the same what you are maintaining in the class by keeping a finger on your mouth. Here, discipline is something else. Whatever orders are given by the superiors to the subordinates, they have to follow those orders. There is no chance that subordinates can avoid whatever orders are given by the superiors. So they have to maintain a perfect discipline in the organization. Whether the orders are coming orally, all the orders are coming in written form. They have to meet to the best of their knowledge and ability. Our next principle is unity of command. It means each employee must have a single boss only. He must receive all the orders from the same. What happens if he gets order from so many bosses? There will be overlapping of work. If first boss is asking him to do the work, he will say, I'm doing the work of the second boss. And if the second boss is telling him to do the work, he will say he's doing it for the third boss. So now you can understand, it is almost impossible to take work from the employees if they are having more than one boss. If there is one boss, the responsibility will be fixed. And if employee is unable to complete his task, will be kept responsible. And if the order is given in writing, then action will be taken against him. Our next principle is unity of direction. A single plan of action is to guide the organization. This principle comprises that there should be one head and one plan for each department. And the head of the department must ask all the subordinates to come together, make a single group, and then he has to direct it, their activities toward the attainment of whatever plan they have derived earlier. If the activities are directed in a proper way and if the employees are giving their level best, then certainly they will be able to achieve the target which are specifically settled for their own department. Our next principle is subordination of individual interest in general interest. 
the interest of an organization should take priority over the interest of any one individual employee. In fact, management must set the targets in such a way that while meeting individual targets, the targets of the business organization is automatically achieved. Let me understand it with the help of an example. The management is thinking in increasing its production, but they can't ask the employees to walk fastly so that the production can be increased. But the management can ask the employees that if they want to increase their salaries, they have to go for overtime. When the employees are going for overtime, it's not like they are going to help the management in achievement of the organizational objectives. Basically, they will be meeting their own targets because their individual target is to achieve or to get more and more money. And while going for overtime, they will certainly be able to earn more money. And in due course, the production of the organization will automatically increase. So in this way, the management must try that whatever activities are done, are done in complementary to each other. While meeting individual targets, the management targets are automatically achieved. Our next principle is remuneration of employees. The overall pay and compensation should be fair to both employees and the organization. It ensures good relations between workers and management, which helps in the smooth functioning of the organization. The management must not try to exploit a particular worker by thinking that the worker is in need of job. He has to run his family, so even if he is offering small amount of wages, then also he can take the work from them. Certainly, the management will be able to get work from them, but it will be an exploitation. And being the honest business organization, the manager must not exploit the workers in any way. Our next principle is centralization and decentralization. Centralization means keeping all the power at the top level of management. Whereas decentralization means giving the authority to all the levels of the management. In our first episode, students, we have discussed that we are having three levels of management. The top level of management, middle level of management, and the lower level of management. If the entire power is kept at the top level of management, then it is known as centralization. All the decision-making power will be taken by the top level of management. They will be giving a very little liberty to the middle level of management and may not be any liberty to the lower level of management. So anything which increases the role of employees in the organization are known as decentralization. Now you may be thinking whether the business organization should go for centralization or decentralization. Actually, there is no formula to decide whether there should be complete centralization or there should be complete decentralization. Rather, the organization has to establish a balance between the centralization and decentralization. Our next principle is scalar chain. All orders and instructions should flow in a proper order. In case of emergency, the chain can be broken to capitalize the opportunities which is known as gangplank. Mr. Henry Fuel says that in an organization there should be an hierarchy. It means there should be the establishment of relationship between the employee and the employer that is known as superior subordinate relationship. So whenever any subordinate is getting order it should come in a proper way. The next principle is order. There are two types of order material order and social order. Materials and people must be in suitable places at appropriate time for maximum efficiency. Here, order doesn't mean the order is given by a person to another person or your father is giving order to you at home. Here, order means each and everything should be placed where it should be. The human resources, the physical resources, everything should be placed where it should be. Take an example, a technician is in need of a tool. He must know where he can find the tool. He will not go here and there in search of the tool. So it is the responsibility of the management to fix the place of each and everything and it should be made available to all the employees. They should know what things are required and from where they can get these things. 
Our next principle is equity, the provision of justice and the fair and impartial treatment of all employees. This principle states that there should not be any discrimination among all the workers on the basis of caste, creed, religion, language or any other basis. If management is discriminating among all the employees, then it will not be able to get whatever targets they have set in. The relationship will not be sweet among all the employees and they will feel isolated in the organization. They will certainly will not be able to give their 100%. So it is imperative to give them a very comfortable and congenial environment where they can feel free, where they can explore themselves, where they are allowed to give their own suggestions, which ultimately helps in the better management of the organization. Our next principle is stability of tenure of personnel. Long-term employment is important for the development of skills that improve the organization's performance. This principle emphasizes that management should allow them to get the job on long-term basis. If they are given the temporary jobs, they will not be able to give their 100%. They will be thinking all the time, anytime they will be out of the organization and then where they will be getting the job. So instead of concentrating on their own work in the organization, they will be concentrating more in getting jobs in other companies. If the management is giving the assurance to the employee that in no case he will be sent out of the organization, then the employee will be giving their 100%. He will be ready to do whatever activities he is asked to do and he will give his 100% and will help in the achievement of the common goals. Our next principle is initiative, the fostering of creativity and innovation by encouraging employees to act on their own. According to Henry Fuel, employees should be encouraged to give their own opinion. They are the ones who are working in the plant, so they know what are the best for the plant. So if there is any plan to improve the position of the plant, it is imperative to take views and suggestions from the employees because they are the one who are all the time present in the plant. And the superiors who are sitting in AC offices, they, they don't know what are the requirements in the plant. And if the suggestions and viewpoints of the employees are taken and are implemented, it will help them to connect to the organization emotionally. They won't feel they are the employees of the organization. They will feel an important part of the organization, which actually they are. Now we have come to our principle number 14, that is Esprit de Corps. Comradeship, shared enthusiasm, foster devotion to the common cause. Esprit de Corps means union is strength. This principle states that if the employees are working in isolation, they won't help in the achievement of organization objectives. If they are having a feeling of brotherhood, a feeling of companionship, if they are giving cooperation to each other, then certainly they will be working as a group and they will help in the achievement of overall objectives of the organization. So students, in today's episode, we have finished the meaning of principles of management and the principles given by the father of general management, Mr. Henry Fjord. So with the help of these principles, now you must be understanding that whenever you are going to start a business, you have to apply these 14 principles to the maximum. And then you will certainly ensure that whatever you would like to achieve with your business, you will definitely achieve this. Thank you.